Okay, we're going to uh, go next uh, to Andrew, uh, and he's going to uh, explain Bitcoin and, and how to scare our parents and all these fun things. So we'll take it away, Andrew, here's your mic. During the uh, break, we were talking to uh, one person who was unfair with not he should get mine, and uh, I was happy to find that out because uh, that's what my talk tonight uh, deals with. Uh, not just uh, how to get mine, but uh, whether or not uh, this is something that uh, you want to do. So it's cryptocurrency mining 101. How to amaze your friends, confuse your parents, worry politicians, and feel like a foreign, foreign currency trader in your cool basement, which will be very warm by the time you're started. And it's all by yourself. <coughs> the title was uh, inspired by this uh, picture that I found on uh, CoinDesk, which explained uh, what your friends will think you do. And your friends will worry you. They'll think you're doing something very risky. Your parents will be utterly confused, because it has something to do with computers. Uh, expect to uh, be mocked by uh, people you don't know very well in society. Politicians, of course, are fretting about this. You will feel like you're uh, trading in, in uh, foreign currencies as, as you watch uh, incredibly small fractions of uh, Bitcoin slowly accumulate in, in your account. And what you'll actually be doing is really just mucking around with computers. <laughs> The uses and the intended and unforeseen consequences. <laughs> He's trying to scan the big one. He's trying to scan the QR code. Of any technology are always greater than the intended consequences. On December 1st, uh, 2013, uh, a fellow at a college football game in Florida decided it'd be fun to hold up his QR code um, for ESPN to to air. Someone uh, captured it, put it on Reddit, enhanced it, and he got uh, twenty six thousand dollars in Look. Bitcoin. <laughs> Holy crap! I need to find the camera. Uh, which which he donated to a um, charity for homeless people in, in Florida. Well, that was good, huh? <laughs> I first heard about Bitcoin <laughs> on Spark, uh, the technology show on CBC Radio, and they explained it as something that was being used in developing countries uh, in place of currency state currency, which was uh, hard to come by. But in these countries, everybody still has a cell phone. Uh, cell phones are very, very cheap. So instead of trying to, to barter and the inefficiencies of trying to trade, uh, you know, two and a half chickens for fixing the tire on my car, uh, they, everybody goes around and they were um, transferring bitcoins from one phone to another. You take a taxi, you pay with, with the bit, bitcoin. And it was having a wonderful positive effect on the economy in developing countries. So this is an example of use of private digital currency. I work in the uh, financial sector. I'm a technical writer um, for Qubits Financial which is now owned by Toronto Dominion Bank. So I, I need to say that all of my comments and opinions are entirely my own, and not, not those of the, the bank. So we deal in the digitization of state-issued currency, which is only uh, a slight different nuance. It's uh, who's creating the currency. I was interested as well uh, when I uh, listened to the Spark show because I was wondering 
is this the new emerging technology that's going to put me out of a job? Or is this going to be the next project that I'm working on? And this company, um, Canadian Virtual Exchange in Edmonton, has been running now for three years. And they have a, um, a card, which is on the Sears network, the same network that uh, MasterCard, credit cards, the debit cards, and gold payment cards are on uh, in Canada. Exactly. Someone in the exactly. crowd has one. <laughs> and allows you to uh, go into any store or automated teller, which is on the Sears network in Canada, and do a withdrawal, converting, um, converting Bitcoin to currency or buying really any good. Uh, they don't have to take Bitcoin. They can take your card, which is on the Sears network. A quick question: that auto, the conversions automatic from Bitcoin each time you make a purchase? I'm not sure if they, it's not automatic yet. That's their next update. But uh, it, they had originally said when they released the card that it was going to be automatic, and then they had problems with the automation of it. Um, but Currently, if you change coin into cash, it's available on the card in like five minutes. It's there, very, very fast, but it's not on the Thanks, Bill. You're in the call. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, really, thanks. Um, there is an update, a new feature improvement every time I go to their site. They're always reducing the fees, which they promised they would do as it became uh, more and more profitable for them uh, in the business. And the fees are, are getting lower. Uh, they have a relationship with uh, every Canadian bank, every major Canadian bank except one right now. So th they are doing well. And I went to work this morning and um, saw an announcement on uh, our internet and also went to the newspaper, uh, went, went to Google Finance and uh, saw that uh, Toronto Dominion has launched uh, a computing technology. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, they're aware of it. I didn't start mining uh, three years ago. I, I wish I had now. Uh, but I'm a member of Crash Bang Labs, which is our uh, local maker space. And anything that is new and, uh, new and interesting technology uh, comes of, uh, of interest to us, and we'll find someone there uh, who is probably thinking the same thing you are and will help you solve the problem. So we started a, a cryptocurrency a mining a special interest group, I guess, and six months ago started putting together mining breaks. This is uh, our 3D printer, so it, it makes things by extruding, um, extruding plastic. This is uh, our next project after cryptocurrency mining. This is a uh, CNC mill. That's what it's going to look like. Right now it's sitting in the kitchen it looks like that. And those things are for making things out of wood or metal. The mining rigs are for making money out of electricity. We consider the mining options. CPU mining uh, became unprofitable uh, quite a few years ago. Mining with uh, graphics cards uh, became unprofitable for mining bitcoins a while back, but uh, S script or script uh, algorithms for mining. Litecoin and other alternate currencies is still profitable. Uh, ASIC mining, which is uh, application specific uh, integrated chips, um, made GPU mining unprofitable for bitcoins, and cloud mining is another option. At first, we looked at buying an ASIC Bitcoin miner, and we found that. Um, Look at the ones on Butterfly Labs, 
and uh, this, this looked very interesting. I did uh, a little bit more research and found that uh, they had a number of pending lawsuits that were being investigated because uh, people had sent in their orders and a year later still hadn't received their ace of miners because it was more profitable for the company to keep uh, taking the money, uh, use it to run their operation and run the bitcoins and create the bitcoins. Now, they and uh, a number of others therefore uh, asked for payment by wire check or Bitcoin only. If uh, they accept the payment via, if they accepted the payment via uh, Mastercard, Visa, uh, there are chargeback rights. They would very easily uh, be able to cancel the order for uh, non delivery of uh, service or goods. Uh, my son mentioned uh, today that uh, there was another uh, article um, on CoinDesk that someone spent $47,000 uh, ordering ASIC miners from uh, seven or eight different um, ASIC mining companies and a number of months ago and hasn't received anything yet as well. So where it says buy or check or Bitcoin only, that's a buyer beware. Cloud hashing uh, is simply paying someone to do the mining for you, uh, but I'm not sure uh, what, what the appeal of that would be. You don't really learn that much. Um, you don't get your hands dirty. And why not just uh, go out and buy the Bitcoin again? So we decided to do something like this, which is uh, putting together uh, the mining rig. The components that you need are uh, an AMD graphics card. The current uh, generations are uh, R9, 280, and 290. Uh, we found that uh, the, the Gigabyte uh, brand uh, seems to be uh, the uh, most reliable. Uh, Google has all of their server farms, uh, thousands and thousands of computers uh, built for them by Gigabyte. And what they've learned by uh, running these computers 24-7 uh, uh, for years and years is how to make uh, uh, robust uh, equipment. Our motherboard, uh, we also uh, picked the uh, Gigabyte ones. Uh, you need one, ones that will uh, have as many PCIe slots as cards that you want to run in it, please. Uh, CPU selection is not important. Uh, low, low wattage is probably best because uh, you're going to be paying for the electricity of having it on. Uh, Sempron processor uh, uses uh, 45 watts or less. You want, however, a high efficiency power supply. Uh, did some research and Antec and Corsair seem to be the, uh, the highest uh, rated. Uh, Antec had the best 1000 uh, watt power supply. Corsair is second best. Uh, Corsair had the best 860 watt power supply and had the second best. So they, those seemed like good bets. Uh, RAM, four gigabytes or more. Um, Bill uh, swears that uh, more works better for him. We tried uh, different uh, uh, capacities, 8 and 16 gig. It didn't seem to improve the, the, uh, the hash rate though. You can use uh, a Windows operating system but you don't need to. Um, use Vamped, which is a um, little Linux distribution designed specifically for mining. You'll want extra cooling fans, and you may or may not uh, want a case or a rig for it. This is uh, how I first started. Notice uh, we have, I think, five fans blowing air into and taking air out of the case. Notice the uh, heat pipe there uh, to keep the, the chipset cool. And we also have a little watt meter there uh, to help us uh, figure out 
make sure that uh, that uh, our power supply is uh, adequate for the, the draw of uh, the particular rig. Does that say 682? 682. Watts? Yes. Watts. Okay. And that's with how many graphics cards running? That's, that's with just two in it. That's what been my experience too. The 680 watts for two graphics cards. Here is a, a robust fan that uh, we found uh, somewhere. I think it's off an old uh, laser printer. And notice the USB drive there. Uh, so we don't have any uh, uh, hard drive in the computer. The entire operating system and software is entirely on the USB drive. This allowed me uh, to do a little bit of woodworking as well. So 50 pieces of wood laminated together makes a nice uh, mining case. Um, this allows air to get under the cards as well. Here are the riser cables coming out from the card and you want to spread them far apart to get as much air going through and we have a fan blowing through them. And there is a window up above we can open to bring in cool air. And which GPU are those? Uh, those are Sapphire R928s. There are four there. Uh, I've owned had as many as five going at once there. I've had three uh, release the, uh, the blue smoke that they run on. We know that they run on blue smoke because when the smoke comes out, they stop working. Expect your electricity costs to go up. These are um, April from 2013 and April 2014. So my power bill last year, in the same month, was six dollars and twenty-five cents. This year, four hundred and thirty-four dollars and sixty cents. One was costing that. <laughs> it's that's the power uh, calling you to ask you what's going on. Uh, as, as I said, your friends will warn you. My friends warned me that I uh, uh, expect the uh, police to show up someday to find out whether or not I have a rule up. Yeah. I've been waiting for it too. <laughs> <laughs> I, like that. I, I expect that there are enough people mining though that they, they, they understand what's going on or probably going on. Oh, they just spoke to you up, don't worry. Big <laughs> <laughs> check, just to make sure. Subpoena and CIX. Okay, he's bought lots for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the higher electricity cost is slightly defrayed by a lower <laughs> heating cost. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my January heating bill last year, which was a cold month, was $115.94. And this year it was $46.60, which is uh, barely more than the cost of my water heater. <laughs> Uh, software concerns, options, uh, everything you need is uh, freely available online. Uh, CG Miner, if uh, you already have a Windows operating system and want to use it. Or uh, we found uh, that uh, Litecoin Bampt um, worked very well, and I found it easier to configure uh, in, in Linux, uh, surprisingly, although I had reluctance uh, to try something that I wasn't familiar with. You'll need the Win32 disk imager to copy the image of Litecoin BAT onto your USB drive. And of course, you'll need a Bitcoin wallet or a wallet for whichever currency you want to be paid in. And then, um, cut off at the bottom is uh, for remote access. Um, you can use uh, Putty or um, there's also a uh, utility in Windows that uh, uh, RDP uh, remote desktop um, yes. yes and that way you don't need to have a monitor and a keyboard hooked up to every rig you can just remote into each of the uh, rigs into the house to check on how they're going So your CG Miner bat file will look something like this. And the first line, um, GPU max allocation percent 100, GPU sync objects 1. Uh, BAMP sets all of that up for you automatically. 
then you have a um, CGMI to config file. And these are just a list of all of the uh, different mining pools that can connect to. And we were trying different ones and switching between them. So we just uh, remark out uh, by putting a little underscore at the beginning of the, of the line, and then it ignores it. It's uh, still a little bit hard to read. Um, there is a, uh, a user uh, for a readme file that will um, provide all the an explanation for all of the different options, uh, and there are oh, probably different hundred things hundred that you can use. The real magic ones, which will give you the higher hash rate, the highest productivity, are these last three in red at the bottom: the GPU threads, thread concurrency, and intensity. And I could not find anywhere online that would explain what, what it was that, uh, that I needed. Uh, Bill uh, was uh, brought the magic uh, to our house one evening. And at that point, now looking at this, I realized that I was able to find the information online, but it was called where people were sharing their settings. And they would refer to this as TC. I didn't see any command for TC. They meant thread concurrency. So GPU threads, 2, thread concurrency, 11,200, intensity, 13, which is not intuitive because you have a choice from 1 to 20, and you think that more is faster, actually you need to slow it down, and then everything works sync, uh, in sync, and your hash rate all of a sudden uh, goes up by 200 and some uh, kilo hashes per second. So you can mine your, yourself, or you can join a mining pool. If you mine uh, by yourself, you will earn nothing for a long, long, long time, and then all of a sudden you'll crack a block, hopefully, and um, it, it's like winning the lottery then. If you join a pool, then everybody shares in the work and the profits of, uh, of the work. Typical uh, now is um, a way, way in which uh, the pools run is that uh, there's a daily payout if uh, your balance is over 0 0.01 bitcoins, or once a week uh, a payout if your balance is over 0 0.001 bitcoins, or you can ask for uh, a payout. Uh, typically, they'll have servers from multiple regions and you'll set up your config file so that if one server fails, your miner will automatically start mining on the next uh, server uh, in, for that pool. So you won't have you know, six hours or 12 hours where your miner is working way but doing nothing. And the, the pools will also have uh, various uh, monitoring and reporting features to tell you how, how your rates are doing. This is one of the uh, first ones that uh, uh, Marshall was uh, using it last summer, uh, burn sites like Coin Mining Pool. Uh, put it in here because I noticed that uh, uh, this site should be considered temporarily closed until we can procure stable hardware. Our current hardware is crashing every three to seven days or so. Uh, these are still early days in mining and it's sort of the Wild West, and you can expect in a competitive environment uh, that's uh, unregulated, people will do things to try to bring down competitive pools as well. This is the um, Litecoin mining pool that I joined um, shortly before Christmas last year. And on Christmas Day, this one was hacked and all of the miners had, well, I guess about a third of the miners, uh, the ones with the uh, biggest uh, balances had their uh, wallets balances there empty. That was hash cows. Oh, that was hash cows? Yeah. Okay. Um, I saved this screen because I cracked the block. <laughs> Felt like I had to accomplish something. Then, um, found out about, someone had the, uh, the brilliant idea to 
mine altcoins and figure out which one was the most profitable alternate script coins. Do the switching for the miners and then we do the conversion and you're paid out in Bitcoin. And as Marshall mentioned, this is the one that was uh, yes. uh, that was uh, hacked. Uh, after that, I switched to Middlecoin, which uh, was doing very, very well. And then others started coming online, Clever Mining and Waffle Pool. So there was uh, a need uh, to try to figure out which of the pools was the most profitable. And some sort of website called Pool Picker, which started tracking the profitability of the different mining pools. So uh, the ones that are in green here are the ones that were most profitable average of for that period. 28 days, 21 days, 14, 7, 3 days, and for one day. And at this point in time, Clever Mining had overtaken the other ones. So on March 11th, I did an analysis comparing the mining pools and made a discovery that if you compare week to week, the average hash rate for the mining pools was decreasing at an increasing rate. So 20 to 21 days, four weeks to three weeks, and down by 5.8%, uh, then 9.2 then 29.9, then 33.3, then 32.4. So as, uh, well, what everybody <coughs> understands is that as more and more of the coin that you're mining is mined, uh, the difficulty increases and the productivity drops. This um, is what pool picker looks like now, and it's very difficult uh, to read. It looks like it's because there's so many alternate currency mining pools going. And you know that there still is generally a decline going. I didn't expect this so, this for it to go up. We did an analysis of the uh, decline in mining and reminded me of a joke I heard, an infinite number of mathematicians walk into a bar. First one orders a beer. The second one orders half a beer. Third one orders a quarter of a beer. Fourth one orders an eighth of a beer, the sixteenth. I can string this one up, but you know where I'm going. The bartender looks at them and says, you're all idiots, and gives them two beer. Because of the uh, declining amount, it will slowly approach and then reach exactly two beer. We're approaching about two minutes left. <laughs> this is the, the value of the old coins that uh, I mined in January, February, March, April, and May. And had it not started to approach a curve and then level off, uh, that would have held true that I never would uh, achieve the same profitability um, that I did in my first two months. Unless something like Dogecoin comes along again. Or there are also other uh, <laughs> unpredictable things that are happening. <laughs> I think we know who is buying all the Dogecoin. <laughs> <laughs> there are uh, currencies uh, be developed called uh, N-Script, I believe, uh, which are designed to um, be difficult um, for anyone to develop an ASIC miner. N-Factor, yes. like Bitcoin. The other thing that uh, you need to consider uh, before deciding to mine is where do you think <laughs> the value of Bitcoin is going to go? Is it going to go up or is it going to go down? Uh, there used to be a, um, 
a, a phrase here frequently, it's going to go to the moon. The Winklevoss twins uh, said that uh, Bitcoin could hit the uh, market cap of 400 billion, 100 times higher than it is right now. This caught my attention because it was in the National Post, not uh, uh, a coining uh, magazine. And uh, our company was uh, temporarily uh, uh, owned by uh, Bank of America as well. And analysts there said, predicted that uh, value of Bitcoin uh, could reach uh, $1,300 US. And this was on December 5th, 2013. Here's a year chart showing the, the value of Bitcoin. And actually it did come um, between uh, 1,100 and uh, 1,200 there. And it's been slowly declining since. If you're going to decide to mine, you also need to consider all the risks. Uh, back in November yet, Mt. Gox, along with others, were being uh, had magazines warning people against doing business with them. And then Mt. Gox fell, and in Canada, Flexcoin shut its doors. I mentioned that uh, uh, you can expect also to be, uh, uh, be mocked or ridiculed. And here, uh, they, they compare, uh, in this magazine, New York Magazine, they compare uh, miners, altcoin miners, to uh, those who are expecting um, the end of the world and aliens to come and uh, take them away. And when the uh, aliens did not come on December 20th after they had sold all their earthly possessions, instead of giving up, they started proselytizing, trying to convince uh, others that uh, all their sacrifices hadn't been uh, in vain. And this is a psychologically normal response. So this was making fun of uh, people who were saying that uh, Bitcoin is a good thing to buy into. Now that's a little bit arrogant though, and ignores the fact that uh, the whole monetary system nearly collapsed in 2008 as well. And on September in 2008, central banks had to inject $184 billion into the banking system in the U.S. to prop it up. So it's not like uh, the banks are uh, run necessarily that much better. Now, Canada avoided much of these problems. Uh, I, I don't think anyone could uh, mention offhand the name of a bank that's failed in Canada. But if, if you go to the uh, uh, Canadian Deposit Insurance Corporation, it has a list of 43 member institutions that failed since 1967. Most of these are trust and mortgage companies, however there are a number of banks in there as well. So, uh, Nathan asked earlier, are we harming uh, state currencies in the current system by mining? According to the European Central Bank, currently virtual currency that interacts with state currency poses no risks since money creation is at a low level. The interaction of Bitcoin and similar schemes with the real economy is low used relatively infrequently by a small group of users, and most importantly, their use is dispersed geographically across many state currencies. Hence, the impact is negligible. Okay, so that it says it's benign. Is it actually possibly good? From a working paper from the Bank of Canada, the presence of multiple competing platforms, currencies, creates inefficiency by limiting network effects. It presents the risk of coordination failure when users will not join one platform or another. But on the other hand, a single well-established dominant platform, in other words, state-issued currency, 
overcomes the issue of coordination that stifles innovation, possibly extracting monopoly profits from the users. And it points out that uh, states have tended now to, uh, or have historically in the last hundred years, tended to decide with one state currency. However, uh, they say that more studies really need it before they all know. So the answer to your question is, no one actually knows they need to study it more. So in conclusion, for your cost-benefit analysis of whether or not to mine, consider your capital expenditures, whether or not you're spending dollars or bitcoins building your, your mining race, expanding it. Consider the variable costs, electricity, repairs, the effects on heating or cooling your house. Realize that whatever technology you use is going to have a finite technical life before it becomes obsolete. Figure out the value of the assets that you're going to have at the end of your operation. We're going to have awesome gaming rigs. <laughs> we also put an education and entertainment value on what we were doing before we started off. And consider the value, future value of Bitcoin. It's going to go to the moon or to China. And lastly, is this a virtuous or a subversive activity? And we're not actually sure yet, and I'm not sure what your motives are either. Yes, so. Why can't it be both? <laughs> <laughs> so to mine or not to mine, the choice is yours. Choose carefully. And Coindesk actually agrees with me, and they were able to say it in only six words. Bitcoin is brilliant, important, extremely volatile. And in honor of Walter White, I wore my Walter White shoes tonight. That's my presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Andrew. Okay, <coughs> and we're going to finish off the tonight uh, after we hit the lights and uh, and we'll let everybody uh, come on up uh, and take a look, uh, if you can't see from back there, at um, John's uh, coin kite machine and let him explain that. This one's pretty quick, I got Okay. I'll explain it for a few minutes. I'm ready to go drink, so. <laughs> Do you want the lights back on? Yeah, I'll turn the lights back on. Yeah, so this is the coin kite machine. Coin kite is a company from Toronto, actually. Uh, it looks exactly like a, a debit machine, so this is what it's made for. It's uh, one of the uses. You, know, you can have it at a coffee shop or any retail operation. And in this retail mode, it could be worked by any average retail employee where you just put, uh, hit a button, make a bill, how much? One dollar. Bitcoin or Litecoin it supports. So we pick Bitcoin and it spits out a receipt with a QR code. It says, Please pay 0 0.00216 Bitcoin to this address. So then you send your Bitcoin to this address. The cashier would then scan it to see and if the funds are there. And if they're there, then you're good to go. Um, so that's a really easy way for businesses to accept Bitcoin. And it's linked to uh, exchange rates. It's the exchange rates from uh, Vertex or uh, Vault of Satoshi, I think. And this is kind of interesting, is you can set what markup rates you want to put on, on accepting each individual currency. So a, a business could actually, instead of paying one, two, three percent of credit card company, you could actually put your own fee of one, two percent and actually make money on each transaction as an extra transaction fee, just doing the conversion. Um, but the thing I'm really interested in this machine for is the second mode, which turns it into a, a Bitcoin exchange. So I can buy or sell Bitcoin right now. So uh, if I hit a button, it prints out the rates, and the rates are linked to Vertex. And I think I've got a, a markup and a discount for, for buying. So there are my rates. Uh, when I'm selling Bitcoin for $482, and I will buy it for $462, if anyone's interested. <laughs> also Litecoin. And coming, I think in June, is uh, Blackcoin, which I don't know too much about, but it's a proof of, um, 
for stake coin, which seems to be really popular right now. So that's actually coming to the coin gate. I don't know how I feel about that, but like it's happening. Next to NEM, similar to those two? It must be quite similar to NEM, and NEM is also a proof of stake. Um, and also the, these, uh, they call it the first Bitcoin debit card. So it's it's a chip card. I, I like to call it a um, receive only hardware wallet, which is basically just a picture, a QR code. Um, so if you go somewhere that has one of these coin kit machines, like if your favorite coffee shop had it, Atlantis or you know O'Hanlon's. You can put your Bitcoin on, on the card and pay for it just like a regular debit card transaction. Um, and I'm selling these cards, they're 10 bucks each. I think on the website they're like 9 bucks, so if you want one, they're kind of cool. So you can. Yeah, it's yeah, so like you can have. the other one, so I might as well get this one. Yeah, it's like you can, get, you can have an actual physical Bitcoin in your hand. Um, any, any questions about it? You, anyone want to try it? It's... Oh, yeah, we'll try that. <laughs> I have, a, I have a question that I was asking over the break. Because um, before I started Trade Bank, I had a business which was selling custom blinds and window coverings. So it's sort of been said to me, you know, what's the harm in accepting Bitcoin? Why don't you just take Bitcoins for your goods and services and then just immediately turn them back into cash? Because based on your rates there, it looks like you, you know, whatever, you're just like a regular bank, you take a couple percent each way on the buying and the selling. So if someone were to buy from you and then or sell immediately back to you, you would make 20 bucks on that. So, uh, like the BitPay, there's a service that does that called BitPay, which will convert your Bitcoin into cash uh, next day. And like account. at approximately what value? So if I sell a thousand, no. or I would retail for a thousand dollars cash, and I get paid an equivalent amount of Bitcoin, exchange it the next day. Yeah, market rate. And I would get about market rate. Yeah, you so get, you get market rate of the transaction time. So the BitPay gives you a fifteen minute window. To transaction. Okay, so like within that 15 minute window, if you say, you know, this is a $200 item, they will give you $200 less than it would be. Uh, the CoinKite, um, they, they have a wallet service online too. It's actually a paid wallet service. Um, if you're receiving Bitcoin, I think it's like 100 bucks a year, kind of like um, BitPay. And you can forward your Bitcoin to a BitPay address if you want fiat next day also with this. Um, it's, they've seen they've got some extra hardware security module that, uh, in, I'm not exactly sure how that hardware module works, but if it was removed from their servers, it wipes everything. And So it, although it's not like a zero trust wallet, it seems to be very, they take security very seriously and it seems like a secure system. I have two other questions go along with that. So. Uh, one is what, you, what you're essentially saying is by the time I exchange it, it might be 1100, it might be 900. It's just it's going to fluctuate based on whatever the market rate is at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. or I mean, it could be 1200 yeah. at that time. Okay. And then second is, uh, you're, you know, you have your exchange on them, but would you physically buy my Bitcoin if somebody paid me in blinds and would I sell them to you, or would I use this exchange service? There are a few uh, exchangers that exchange Bitcoin to fiat dollars okay. um, in Canada, right, so or find some online. Yeah. I'll do it right now if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Anyone want to try the machine? It's hit this button and the rates are I'd like to try the machine to buy one of those. So it, this one's about 900 bucks. It's got a uh, GPRS, so a 3G or whatever SIM card. It works anywhere. Um, yeah. I vote Marshall. How do you how do you use those cards? What service do you use exclusively for use with CoinKite machines? Right, it works. The coins only work in CoinKite machine, but the card is linked to their online wallet. So, um, you know. Uh, you but I think they made their API public. So should somebody else design one to work with them, they have no problem with that because it helps them. So it's, not a, so it's not a wallet. Yeah, go ahead and so it's not oh, hit the buttons. by itself. It's a uh, it's a way to spend Bitcoin in your coin kite online. Right. Yeah. Right. It basically is a, but it's a link to the online yeah. version. Bitcoin like kind. I will take Bitcoin like kind Doge over coin. <laughs> Nobody takes Doge. I prefer Doge. What for coin? Take for no. I'm not selling my version. No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sneaky bastard. You want to print me out the receipt? Yeah.
Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I want you to, 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 oh, I'll print up one, but it'll be for four cents. <laughs> <laughs> this is